What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for September 20th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a feel-good Friday edition of the podcast. Fall is in the air. The weather is starting to get cooler in the mornings. First day of fall is Sunday. Looks like the weather is going to cooperate just in time to watch the Eagles take on the Saints from the sidelines of a baseball field. But it's all good. More on that as we get to Sunday. Before we get started, quick housekeeping notes. Be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mott, Twitter, and TikTok. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Patience is a virtue. I have the ideas. I just need to find the time with my day job, which has been crazy. Start of the school year. September always is a wash just because so once October comes, hopefully I'm able to, to start playing around with some things. But thank you for your patience and your support. Jimbo underscore Mont at the YouTube channel. It's I have some things coming. It's just a matter, like I said, of actually getting there and <clears throat> being able to have the time to do it. Because I don't ever want to do, and you guys know if you've been listening for any time. I don't half-ass anything. I, I, I always want to make sure everything's accurate and everything's right. Uh, so I appreciate the patience, but I do have some fun things I'm working on. It's just I have a lot of other things too uh, between the, my day job, kids sports, uh, doing some projects for the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. So hopefully I have some big announcements coming soon. Uh, be sure to check out my boys over at the Clashing Conferences. I have not listened to the new football episode yet, uh, but I'm sure it's going to be a good one. I'm excited to listen to that today in the background here at work. And then the baseball one dropped today. They're doing good things. Tough one for uh, our Phils. More on that in a minute. Uh, and then go to Philly Goat. Uh, they have the Go Phil shirt, uh, nine different people named phil on it uh it's an interesting it's fun one uh as ryan and the philly goat team said it's probably the dumbest shirt they've ever made but it's also one of the greatest so go to philly goat they have your election needs covered as well if you want to support mccarthy and t mac with a sign for your yard they got you covered i can't wait for my uh democrat republican philly fanatic shirt to come uh, once that comes, I do have the shirt for our winner of the two-year anniversary coming. Um, he ordered uh, the simple cream-colored Philly Goat. It's a, an amazing shirt. Uh, so I'll announce his name once it comes, and I'm confirm with him. But go to Philly Goat. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. All right, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. And... I asked you, based on the mayor's announcement for the Sixers Arena, where did you want the arena to go? 92% of you said South Philly. Not one person who interacted with me at all yesterday said, with the exception, I guess, of my wife, but I won't count her, uh, said that they wanted it in Chinatown. There's quite a few of people said it doesn't matter as long as it's not in Jersey. That's really where the other 8% came from. Thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. The text line was uh, very busy yesterday with folks calling in. Um, I was interacting with one person who said it was a bonehead move. Um, and finally, I did have a reason other than sort of traffic that was a valid point. Uh, he did mention the, the appeal down in South Philly is parking uh, and getting there and the ease of getting there. However, the tailgating aspect is something that he mentioned. However, I don't necessarily see too many people tailgating for Sixers games. Uh, I've never tailgated a Sixers game. Uh, usually you get down there, you either go in early, grab some crab fries, or you, you hit uh, chickies and pizza on Packer before you come, or uh, go to Xfinity Live. Or, like So I don't know... For the Sixers specifically, if tailgating is really uh, an appeal for the Sixers to stay in South Philly. Uh, but it just got me thinking, and uh, I guess I'm coming out on fire again on a Friday. As someone who lived in the city for 20 years, I spent 15 years in Roxborough. I spent uh, probably 10 of those years uh, or so on the Roxborough Community Development Committee. 
And basically, we were the Roxborough's version of the people that are protesting and talking with the mayor about the stadium going in Chinatown. And one thing I'll say about the, the residents in Philly, you, you, we tend to shoot ourselves in the foot a lot. By that, I mean very stubborn and very resistant to change and always and and we talked the other day about going back to that whole new philly mentality instead of the old philly but when it comes to to changes in the neighborhood and changes in the community i feel as though the residents of philly have a very old school philly mentality um i mean for instance like there were people that would come to those meetings just to say no this sucks it's not going to work and tell you why it didn't matter what it was we, there was a lot behind my old house that uh, at one point had houses on it something happened with the environment and essentially the the uh, the houses collapsed and it, it wasn't i guess you could have spent the money and fixed up the land and, and rebuilt on it but there was a lot of dogs in the neighborhood and there was a few dog parks uh down in manioc and different places in roxboro but for that specific area it was a great spot for a dog park i used to take my dog there uh, other people would take their dog and it wasn't necessarily all the way fenced in. So that was sort of the big plan. And I can still picture this guy's face. All he said was no, because then dogs are going to be barking all the time. Didn't live on the blocks that would be impacted by it. But that, that's the kind of mindset I feel as though Philly has sometimes when it comes to change. And I think... We need to take this at a thirty thousand foot view more so than just this is what's gonna what it's gonna mean. Bigger picture, it's going to be great for the city. There is nothing going on on there. Uh, that whole area uh, on Market Street is it, it's a waste. I mean, and if you do it the right way, you you have access to Delaware Ave and the river and like I feel like the that's a whole other issue for another day. I feel like the the whole riverfront area is just uh, miles and miles and miles of like wasted space that could be uh, parks and and just different things like that. But don't want to get into that. So for me, I, I think we we got to look at this as a thirty thousand foot view and and not be selfish about it because a lot of people are like, oh well, how am I going to get down there? Traffic is going to be there. And a lot of this is going to be dependent upon SEPTA, and I know that's a big ask. But the regional rail goes, literally drops you off right there at the arena. And I think people just need to kind of look at it from the bigger picture. And yes, you might have to change your habits, but I mean, I don't know, maybe you help the environment out, whatever. But um I just feel sometimes Philly residents uh, are just, they shoot themselves in the foot a lot because they're just stubborn and resistant to change. It's one of the charms about the people in Philly. It's one of the reasons I love living there. Um, and obviously, we needed a bigger space, this, that. I was very dead set against moving out of the city. Uh, at some point in my life, I probably am going to retire and move back to the city. But it's just, it's one of the, the positives and the negatives. It's just, it's very charming how everybody is very neighborhood centric and loves their neighborhoods. But I think sometimes it gets in the way of progress. Um, but that's just my rant on that. More on this. This fight is far from over. Um, it's in city council now. So as more of the story develops, we'll keep you posted. But thank you to everybody who reached out via the voice and text line yesterday. Excuse me. 267-495-8531. Back to the Future Voice and Text Line. I enjoy interacting. I try to answer every text that comes in. Um, so continue to do so. Leave voicemail. And if you leave a voicemail, I can get you on the show. Uh, shout out to Matt from Fort Washington, like I said from earlier this week, who reminded me of our, our roots on this podcast with the new Philly. And I think when it comes to the Sixers arena, we need to have a new Philly mentality but like I said, this is far from over. So keep it coming. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot to text about today as we get into the episode. So let's start with the Phillies game. Once again, they lost the first game of the series. Uh, once again, they lost while Taiwan Walker was on the mound. 
And that, that means that I think that I saw 6-12 and 12 in Taiwan walk, Walker's start. And if you look at where they are in the standings, everything could be wrapped up if they won four of those games that Taiwan Walker started. And in most of those starts, he put them in a bad position, much like he did last night. I don't necessarily have an issue with him starting. I know folks are like, why is he out there? Like He had pitched well out of the bullpen. My issue is... Why send him, send him back out there to start the fourth inning? Obviously, he didn't have it. And kudos to the Phillies for battling back. They got down 4 nothing. It was 4-3 going into the bottom of the fourth. I, I would have put, brought in Allard or somebody else or one of the junk guys in the bullpen because it was obvious that Taiwan didn't have it. And I don't know if that – I mean, Rob Thompson said he didn't want to spend the bullpen early in a, an important series that they have, but – Come on, dude. This is now multiple times this season that you've pulled the old Doc Rivers scheduled loss. And for once, the team responded. I mean, they they battled back after being down 4 nothing. It would have been easy for them, I feel, to go into a scheduled loss and just say, okay, let's throw our hands up. We'll come back tomorrow. You did them no favors, Rob, by putting him back out there in the fourth inning. And I don't know if that's coming from Dombrowski because of the contract, whether it's just your stubbornness. But, I mean, there, you had guys in the bullpen that could have pitched. Um, low leverage guys that could have done. I mean, worst case scenario, you bring an Allard in, he gives up three-run bomb. You're still in the same position. But Taiwan Walker was not giving you a chance in that game. So to bring him back out there – and then get down all of a sudden nine to three when it was four to three. It's just poor managing on Rob Thompson's part. And I'm usually I, I usually take his side on things like that, but I, I can't on this one. Like you cost them the game. And again, credit the team for still battling back. I mean, they got it to nine to six, and I, I was like envisioning a ten to nine win. And then I mean, things happen with the bullpen. I'm not blaming uh, Alvarado for, uh, I mean, that was just a hard hit. But Taiwan Walker was throwing absolute meatballs. I think it was Nimmo or whoever hit that moonshot that hit off of the the windows of the um, the club box level. I mean, he said, oh, I missed. No, you threw a meatball. And he had no business being out there. And I, I, it's just frustrating because I do feel – that usually when they get down early and Taiwan Walker starts, the team just is like, okay, this is going to be a loss. But they battled back. It was 4-3. to three. And we talk about eye test and, and feel for the game. There's no reason and like no justification that you're going to tell me is going to make it okay for Taiwan Walker to go back out there for the fourth inning. Um so, I mean, they're up six games with nine to play, uh, still in very much in control of everything. Three games up on Milwaukee, who lost. Um, so, I mean, that looking good to at least get that by. Dodgers, Shohei Otani, oh my God, what a game by him. They're now tied with the Dodgers, but because of the tiebreaker, the Phillies would get the first seed. But, man, that dude is just lights out. Like He had like a... Uh, uh, RBI baseball stat line six for six, 10 RBI, three home like ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But they look to clinch a playoff spot for the second or third straight night with Christopher Sanchez on the mound. I do think it was a good sign that they had some fight, uh, despite getting down early. Um, and, and that one's on the manager. I'm gonna put that 100% on Rob Thompson for putting him back out there. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and it came up a couple weeks ago when I was on the baseball version of the Clashing Conferences, but I, I laughed it off as like, ha, 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 it's a joke, but I'm wondering if for real if Taiwan Walker is a mole for the Mets because those the, the, the shots he gave up were at, like meatballs, and the Nimmo one was a moonshot, like Jesus. So I, I, I maybe it's just a Conspiracy Friday, but man... Taiwan Walker might be the mole. Mike Randler, you might be on to something. But they do look to get back. They win today. Magic numbers down to two to win the division. They clinch a playoff spot. All is well. But, man, what a wasted opportunity yesterday. All right, Eagles. That The line has moved to three. 
and I think that's in part because of the injuries. Uh, doesn't look like AJ is going to play, and the rumblings I've been hearing are CJ Gardner Johnson's going to be out with a foot injury. Um, so uh, we'll see. Does that mean we see mo- more uh, Cooper DeGene? Does Avante Ma- like? I don't know how they're. They have a couple different options they could do, but that's a big loss. Uh, a veteran playmaker, especially against this team. I still don't understand the line though. I feel like the line is too low. And there's just obviously there's a reason why the line is what it is. I just can't put my finger on it. Uh, I, I would think this line would be maybe four and a half, five, um, three is just it still seems way too low. But it's on Vic Fangio. I've been talking about it all week. He spoke yesterday at the press conference. He was like, "We're not going to get a pass rush until we play better against the run." I'm looking at you, Jordan Davis. I'm looking at you, Jalen Carter. Uh, I'm looking at you, Zach Bond, um, Bryce Huff. I, give us something like you. I feel like you're still a missing person down in Brazil. Uh, but I mean, and he's right. You got to play better against the run. But that's on him. Uh, he mentioned what we've been talking about with teaching the technique, like the fundamentals. But you, you got to get on that, dude. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, we get some more clarity on the injuries. After uh, practice today, uh, and then we'll start breaking down the game tomorrow. But somebody, if you can explain why this line is three, uh, it just seems lo- and a lot of fishy lines this week. I, and I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, I don't know if they're trying to bait people into betting one side or the other. But I mean, Kansas City's only three and a half uh, down in Atlanta. That seems low. Uh, the Ravens are only minus one and a half in Dallas. It just, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's still a lot of time for those lines to move. Flyers opened up training camp yesterday. Uh, Tortorella's famous rope test. Uh, big conditioning test, mental test for them. Looking forward to them to getting back on the ice today. They open up the preseason on Sunday against Washington. All right, today we're going to do a little bit of a double header, and we're going to go back to 1992. It was a busy day for uh, Philly sports. First, the Phillies were playing the Pirates at Three Rivers Stadium. At the same time, the Eagles were playing the Broncos at the Vet. First, let's go to the Phillies. They lost that game at in Three Rivers, 3-2 to two to the Pirates in 13 innings. Dave Hollins and Mariano Duncan knocked in both runs with home runs. Kurt Schilling pitched nine innings in that game, gave up two runs, only had three strikeouts, but this was like the heyday of the Pirates with Bonilla, Van Slyke, uh, Sid Bream, Bonds. Uh, so they, they were a stacked team. So that's a good, very, very good outing by Kurt Schilling. In the bottom of the sixth, though, the Pirates started to have a rally. They had two on, no out. Jeff King stepped up to the plate, hit a liner that looked like it was going to go into the gap in center between center and right field. But then one Mickey Morandini dove to his right, caught the ball, kind of rolled over, got up, stepped on second, just as Barry Bonds was kind of running in from first base, tagged him for an unassisted triple play. It was the ninth in Major League Baseball history, uh, first one in Phillies history. Uh, They did have one back in 2009. We talked about when Eric Brentland did it against the Mets. There's only been 15 total in Major League Baseball history. It's one of the most rare and hardest to accomplish feat in baseball. Um, the Phillies, to their credit, have been involved in three of them. Three of the 15 the Phillies have been involved in. Uh, you have Morandini's on this day in 92. You had Eric Brutlitz back in 2009. And then in 1923, um, Ernie Padgett of the Braves completed one against the Phillies. Uh, but that was the Phillies version of this day. All while this is going on, the Eagles are playing down at the vet and shut the Broncos out 30 to nothing to move to 3-0 and on the season. Defense dominated the day. They held uh, John Elway to 59 yards and an interception. They sacked him three times. They had four total sacks in the game. It gets better. This was the team that the year before was the the 1991 greatest defense to ever pl- lace up their pads in the NFL. Nobody's going to tell me any different. That's not what we're debating today. But this was the 
a uh, year after Jerome Brown tragically passed away, but they held the Denver offense to 82 total yards, 0 for 11 on third down, and then the offense was masterful. Randall Cunningham went 18 for 25, 270 yards, three touchdowns. We had Calvin Williams with five catches for 108 yards, two touchdowns. Arkansas Fred Barnett, five catches for 102 yards and a touchdown. And this was a fun year. It was the bring it home for Jerome year. Uh, they finally won a playoff game down in New Orleans. It's one of the key parts of why I'm, I'm focusing on this game today, too. Uh, it does happen. Uh, the Eagles should not have won that game in New Orleans, but they did. Uh, it happened to be Reggie White's last year. But on this day, the doubleheader, the Phillies lost to the Pirates 3-2, to two, but Mickey Morandini with the ninth unassisted triple play in Major League Baseball history. And then in South Philly, the Eagles shut out the Broncos 30 to nothing in an absolute dominant performance uh, to move to 3-0 on the season. All right, finally today, we're going to go with our Philly sports villain. And I'll give you the other side of the coin. Yesterday, we talked about Donovan McNabb, which I don't agree with him being a villain. The other side, Donovan will always forever be tied to this guy, and that's Terrell Owens. And... Like I said, we're trying to be fair and equal. It's election season. We're going to give you both sides of the the podium here. But if you remember the whole courtship of T.O., his agent uh, didn't fax the offer sheet in on time. Uh, and thought he signed with the Raiders or traded to the Ravens or what? however it was. And it was a whole mess, but ultimately signed a seven-year, $49 million contract. And, and the difference he made was immediate for this team. Uh, it was obvious right away that they were finally going to get over the hump. First preseason game was the long bomb to T.O. And in the crowd, that's when everybody started going, T.O., 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 T.O. But in that season, 77 catches for 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns in 14 games. Remember the, he, the horse collar tackle where he broke his leg. Missed the final few games of that season and the playoff run, but came back in time for the Super Bowl and played out of his mind. Nine catches for 122 yards on a broken ankle. Obviously wanted a new contract, said he had outperformed that. Uh, And then the whole training camp fiasco happened where he was doing sit-ups in his driveway, lifting weights with the media. Um, And it just... uh, he made the comments like I'm not the one who got tired in the Super Bowl uh, a thinly veiled shot at Donovan McNabb obviously that pissed off Donovan uh, and they they were able to kind of put it aside to start that season uh, but then it started to get worse he got upset uh, as more he played well and wanted the new contract he was more pissed off it came out later that Donovan didn't have his back the way he did Brian Westbrook um, which I, I, I will take uh, Terrell Owens' side on this one. Donovan should have had his back, even if you don't believe it, And which is part of the reason why Donovan was a villain in this story because everybody felt that he was pro-Joe Banner, pro-Andy Reid, and they were kind of feeding him what to say and what not to say. And then if that wasn't bad enough, things got weird. Um, again, they played well. At the beginning of the season, and then uh, after they lost to the Cowboys, T.O. wore Michael Irvin jersey, and that's cardinal sin number one as as an Eagles player. You don't support anything Dallas. Um, Then he fought Hugh Douglas, who was an ambassador to the team, uh, because he called him out um, saying some guys are faking injuries. So they literally got into a fist fight. And then he was interviewed by Michael Irvin, and Michael Irvin asked him, do you think you'd be undefeated if you had Brett Favre as your quarterback? T.O. said yes, did not really provide much other details to that. Later he said, well, Donovan's been hurt right now, so obviously we'd be better if we had Brett Favre. Um, Instead of just saying that in the thing, or instead of getting Donovan's back, T.O. played the Tom Petty game and was just super petty and was like, well, you didn't have my back. I'm not going to have yours. Uh, And then Andy Reid wanted him to apologize to Donovan. So uh, I guess Drew Rosenhaus and T.O. wrote up this apology. There was a specific line in there to apologize to Donovan. T.O. said, 
crossed it out, didn't read it. Um, at the end of the day, he ended up getting suspended. They sent him home uh, and then released him at the end of the season. 21 games, though, in Philly. 124 catches, almost 2,000 yards, 20 touchdowns. So exciting, and I still, to this day, like my blood is boiling right now because both of these guys acted like absolute children when it came to dealing with each other. Like I, I talk about it all the time. Like I'm not necessarily going out to dinner and having drinks with the people I work with, but we have good working relationships and we get our job done. If they could have just put their egos aside, the Eagles could have won at least one, maybe two Super Bowls during that run. And 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 really, it was it, that's all it was was ego. So this was all 20 years ago. To is the villain today. Yesterday it was Donovan. But I'm going to ask you to have a little bit of fun here on a Friday. 20 years later, who's to blame for the wasted opportunity of Donovan McNabb and Terrell Owens? Is it Donovan or T.O.? This might surprise you. As someone who drives the Donovan McNabb bus, I'm telling you, this was 100% on Donovan. All he had to do was was come out and say, he's not the one that negotiates the contracts. He's not the one that gives out the money and signs the paychecks. He did it for Brian Westbrook. You had a great thing, Donovan. All you had to do was say, yes, he outperformed his contract. I think he should get more money. That's it. That's all you had to do. And likely, T.O. would have gotten himself in trouble somehow anyway, based on his history. But the whole Eagle Donovan versus T.O., drama i'm putting the blame on donovan what do you think 20 years later we're gonna have a little bit of fun on a friday i mean it's better than thinking about how bad the saints are going to beat the eagles this weekend Uh, but 267-495-8531 get you into the back to the future voice and text line whose side are you on team donovan team to who is to blame for the whole and that's all it is is a wasted opportunity they it was magical what they had and ego got in the way as usually is the case with whether it's a a band uh, teams whatever egos always tend to get in the way if they could have put those egos aside we'd have a couple super bowls by now but let me know what you think who's to blame donovan to 267-495-8531 will get you in Get anything else Philly sports related. You want to go on a Taiwan Walker rant? Want to tell me how I'm being unfair to the residents of Philly for being stubborn? Listen, I lived there for 20 years. I was one of those stubborn people. I fought tooth and nail to not get a Wendy's on the corner by my house. And honestly, as soon as I had kids who were old enough, I always said I would never go to that Wendy's. As soon as they started to like chicken nuggets and it was easy, I went to the Wendy's. We're stubborn. But we, we resist change for some reason. Stop resisting. Like there, there's a time and a place for resistance. Putting the stadium in South, or uh, Chinatown is not one of them. But let me know your thoughts on that. On this day in 1992, Mickey Morandini had an unassisted triple play in the Phillies. 3-2, 13 inning loss to the Pirates. At the same time, the Eagles absolutely dominated the Denver Broncos and John Elway. 30 to nothing down at the Vet. That all happened in 1992. We'll have more on Flyers camp as it comes. Hopefully we get that magic number down to two and clinch a playoff spot tonight. Third time's the charm. Christopher Sanchez going for the fills tonight. Let's get it done. And and let me know your thoughts. I, th- I blame Rob Thompson. There's no way Taiwan Walker should have come out for that, that fourth inning unless he really is a mole and somehow Rob Thompson's involved in it too. I don't know. How's that for a conspiracy theory on a Friday? This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for September 20th, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Friday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.